Sometime back, Google released chat GPT competitor called Bard, and that chatbot was pretty bad. Recently, just few days back, they upgraded Bard, and now Bard seems to be performing really good. In this video, I'm going to be asking few key questions to both of these chatbots, and we will see which one performs better. And towards the end, I will mention some key differences between these two chatbots. I have opened Bard here by going to bard.google.com. It's free; anyone can try. And then in the other window, I have Chat GPT open. I'm using GPT 3.5 model, which is the free version of it. Now let's start with this question where I want to know the price of the Tesla stock today. And if you have used ChatGPT, you know that ChatGPT can't answer the questions related to the latest information because the model is trained only up till September 2021. In the case of Bard, however, it can go to internet and pull the latest information. See, this is the price, okay? Uh, if you want to Google it, you can just click here and then you can just uh, find some prompts, you know, which are similar to this question. For this question, you might have done Google search as well using these prompts. And if you go here, you know, you will find the price, okay? There is some difference here, like some decimal, but it's correct information. So this is the thing I like about Bard that it gives you the latest information. It goes to internet, pulls the latest information out of it. Okay, so in this particular case, I'm going to use Bard because I care about the latest information. Let's move on to the second use case. Let's say you have a manager who takes things personally and who is giving you unreasonable deadlines. You want to talk to that person. You want to send an email and, and you want to discuss a matter. How do you do that? Well, you can take chat GPT's help and you can say, okay, you know, I have this manager who takes things personally, write me an email and I want to discuss about unreasonable deadlines. And let's see how chat GPT is going to do. At the same time, I'm going to ask the same question to Bard as well. Now see, I asked it to write a 10 lines email. It wrote me a huge email. See, my manager would not like to read such a huge email. So it is making a mistake. It is not 10 lines. It, it is actually 10 points, okay? Uh, this is 3.5, maybe GPT-4 is doing a little better than this. Uh, but overall, if you read this email, it has done a good job. See, uh, first you are expressing your appreciation, okay? You say, I value your guidance and expertise in managing your project. Your support has been instrumental in our progress thus far. I, this is a human psychology that if you want to give someone a negative feedback, first talk about their positive, okay? That way, that person becomes receptive of your critical feedback. This is a psychological technique that people use and ChatGPT is smart enough. It is figuring that out and it is giving you uh, the body uh, which can you know convey the message in the right way. Let's look at Bard. Okay, I'm writing you today to discuss the deadline of the project. I've been working on this, okay? It wrote it in 10 lines, but I don't see that element where you are, you know, first are talking about something positive about your manager. But I want to point out something here. Bard has this feature where you can view multiple drafts for the same question. If you want to do this thing in chat GPT, you have to regenerate the response and it will kind of write the whole thing. Whereas in Bard, it's kind of convenient. See, you have three responses, alternate responses. Now, if I look at this one, see, I have already put in a lot of work. I'm confident, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I would like to propose. Okay, I don't like this one as well. Uh, I'm concerned. I've been whatever. Okay, overall, it did not do that well, but I was just running this uh, some other time and I noticed that it had that human empathy element. It was talking about positive. Okay, so let's see if it can do this. I... Okay, overall, I think it's doing a reasonable job. Uh, so here I would say both of these are doing pretty good. In case of chat GPT, it is writing me a big response. So I'll probably use Bard 
in this particular case. One other cool feature that it has is you can export the response uh, into your Google Docs or Gmail. Let's say you want to use Gmail to write an email to your manager. You just click here and it will create a draft and then you just say open Gmail. See, it's kind of a handy feature here and it also gives you some tips. You know, be respectful, professional, be positive, blah, blah, blah. The next use case I have is I want to test ChatGPT's knowledge on my YouTube channel. I have this YouTube channel. I will say who is the creator of this particular channel and it says uh, it's a professional called Amlan Datta. Who the hell is Amlan Datta? It's Thawal Patel. Okay, uh, let's ask the que same question to Bard. And by the way, I asked this question to chat GPT three times. One time it told me it's Bhavas Butt. Bhavas Butt is another YouTuber, but of course he has a different channel. Then second time it says some Aman Garewal something. So chat GPT is outright lying with so much confidence. Whereas if you look at Bard, it just says, okay, Tawal Patel is the creator of this channel, you know, Atlic technology, whatever. See, it's giving me very accurate information. Here it made one mistake. His YouTube channel has 1.5 million subscribers. Maybe in the future we'll have it. Right now it's 800K, you can see it here. So it made a little bit of a mistake here, but overall the main question, you know, who is the creator? That question was answered correctly. Now I want to trick chat GPT and I, I want to say no, it is Rita Mehta. Let's see how it behaves. See, I apologize. It is incorrect. The channel is Almandata. However, if there have been changes, then I'm not. It's always a good idea to verify. See, <laughs> okay, it just bluffs. And if you do the same thing uh, to this, no, it is Rita Mehta. If you do the same thing with but I do not have information about this. See, it is giving me a proper response here. So for testing knowledge, I would use Bard in place of ChatGPT. Now let's move on to my favorite one, which is I will ask ChatGPT to write code. Let's say you have a CSV file where you have player scores, okay? And you want to find an average score of every player. Rohit Sarma played in two matches, 80 and 100. So the average score will be 90. Maxwell played in two matches, 60, 80, average score will be 70. This is a general like data analytics type of code that you want uh, both of these chatbots to write. So I will give a proper information. I will say, okay, write a Python code. Here is my CSV file, three columns. And you know, you need to find an average score per player. Let's do the same thing with this particular thing. And you will see that once you read the code, I mean, I have gone through the code. It is pretty accurate, okay? It is pretty accurate, it writes nice command. The code works. You can also say, rewrite the same code, same code using pandas and it works pretty well, okay? So 100 out of 100 for ChatGPT. In case of Bard, however, it is making a mistake. If you read this code, it is wrong. Folks, it is wrong code. Google guys, wake up. I know it is an experiment stage. Uh, maybe I will give up. It's a wrong code. It is a wrong code. I'm going to help Google with this particular thing. But anyways, here it is printing wrong code. Maybe you can look at other drafts. Okay, let's look at the other draft other drafts, number of matches, maybe other one is correct, but the first one it got me wrong, whereas in the case of ChatGPT is damn accurate. So for writing code, I'm going to use ChatGPT. Bard has this additional feature where you can just export the response to Google Collab. So here I will just say export to Google Collab and if you open it, Google Collab is a cloud version of Jupyter Notebook. Um, it's a product of Google and see, you can just run this code here. So this is once again, very convenient. Uh, I would definitely use it if Bard has given the correct code or maybe see the structure of the code is still uh, good enough. I can maybe change a couple of lines here instead of just one number. I can use a list 
or I can use a uh, player count. You know, I can make some changes and make this code correct. All right, the next use case is writing LinkedIn post. I'm very active on LinkedIn and I use ChatGPT and Bard sometimes to write my post. So let's say I want to say, write an eight line, highly engaging LinkedIn post on the topic, why AI will not replace data analyst jobs. Folks, AI, I don't think is gonna replace data analyst jobs. Let's see how ChatGPT is doing in terms of LinkedIn post and see why AI will not replace data analyst jobs. I like the fact that it is using all these emojis and also it is having that scroll stopper. In LinkedIn, when people are scrolling, you want to have your first line such that people want to stop scrolling and they want to read further. So here, ChatGPT is doing a good job with it. You can read through it. It is, it is kind of okay. You can also regenerate the response why AI will not replace jobs and it's fine actually. Now let's do the same thing with Bard and see how that goes. And by the way, what I will do is I will ask it to rewrite and add some storytelling and humor, okay? So let's see how the new one looks like. And in this case, see in this case, okay, it looks good, but it's not as good as ChatGPT. Okay, you, know, you can read it, uh, AI can help, whatever. It's not using emojis, it's, it doesn't have that engaging first line, okay? And I will say, okay, now add some humor and storytelling to it. Now let's move back to ChatGPT and see what kind of humor it has added. Okay, why a data analyst will not replace your, let me tell you. Oh my God, it created a story. Kingdom of data driven decision. There was a you know, Arthur, Arthur, oh my goodness. See, it is doing a good job. It's a long post. I can reduce it to reduce this post to only 10 lines. Okay, uh, this is challenging. Okay, whatever. Overall, I have used ChatGPT and it is doing pretty good job. Whereas in the case of Bard, okay, I know what you're thinking as taking over the world. So it is trying to add some storytelling and humor, but it is not as good as ChatGPT. So the conclusion is for writing code and for LinkedIn post, I will use ChatGPT. Let's move on to our last use case where I want to ask a question related to ethics. The question is, Rahul commits a murder. Sheila is a judge. He's giving, she's giving death sentence to Rahul. After the death, um, isn't Sheila responsible for the death of Rahul and should be punished? You know, as a human, we know it is judge's responsibility, so it's okay. But I want to see uh, what kind of reasoning ChatGPT gives uh, for this ethic related question. And I will ask the same question to uh, this one as well. And here it says judges are responsible for upholding the law, answering whatever. See, in this scenario, President Sheila did not physically commit it, but rather whatever the response of the model lies with Rahul, the person who committed the act. See, it is giving the response, but actually, you know, it's not very convincing. Whereas if you read Bard's response, judges are not responsible for the death of convict. This response is very, very high quality. It's very, very human readable as if I'm talking to some human. Okay. So in this particular ethic related question, Bard has outperformed ChatGPT. Folks, these are free versions. I would suggest that you go and try it out and you read the response with a calm mind. You'll realize Bard's response is more human readable. It is as if some human is talking to you, explaining things in a very simple language where this is using some abstract language. There is some confusion to it. It's not as good as what Bard is giving to you. So overall, out of six questions that we asked, Bard did pretty well in four and in remaining two, which is coding and LinkedIn post, ChatGPT did pretty well. Now, this is a huge improvement. The initial version of Bard was so horrible that no one would want to use it. But now Google has made huge improvements and they are in neck to neck competition with ChatGPT. Asking six question is no way to measure the performance of these two chatbots. It's a very small sample size. As I use 
these two for next few days i will get better understanding bard was just released three days back so this is just my first impression of it i would suggest you guys also try it out but i am very hopeful google is doing improvements uh, people are going to give the feedback and their their next version is going to get back better and better so the ai race is heating up and google is making a big progress now let's talk about the three key differences between these two chatbots the first one from the tesla example you know uh, that google bard pulls the latest information out of internet whereas chat gpt at least 3.5 version pulls it till September 2021 uh, even if they release new chatbots in the future maybe they will have train the bot till some data point whereas that is not the case with Google uh, language model Google uses Lambda which is Google's language model for dialogue application based on which chat GPT version you're using underlying model could be GPT 3 or GPT 4 so chat GPT by the way is a front facing final product or an application whereas gpt3 or gpt4 are the model you know the ai models which powers this application that model in case of bard is lambda the third difference is as of now google bard is free for all whereas in case of chat gpt uh, gpt4 is 20 dollar a month whereas gpt3 is free but sometimes it's not up you know it might be down etc uh, so overall Pricing wise, I think Google Bard is better. Now, obviously, Google is not doing any charity in the future. Probably they will also come up with a free version. But this is the state of the things as of now. Now, folks, remember one thing. AI will not replace your jobs, but a person using AI will. So make sure you start using these tools to improve your productivity. AI, you can treat it as your friend, which can improve your productivity. We looked at all these use cases, you know, writing email, writing code, LinkedIn post, etc. Start using AI tools that will make you more and more productive. If you like this video, you can give it uh, a thumbs up and click on like button so that the YouTube algorithm becomes happy. If you have any question, there is a comment box below.